Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Air Space Conference and Trade Show, where our coverage is sponsored by Fincantieri, Huntington Ingalls Industries, as well as Leonardo DRS. And we're here on the Boeing stand to talk to Dan Gillian, who is the Vice President uh, of uh, the F-18 program, a very successful franchise for you guys. Um, Dan, talk to us a little bit. You know, there was money in the President's budget, not a vast amount of money, but just certainly it's not money that you could sneeze at. Uh, talk to us about the amount, about $280 million, if I'm correct. Talk to us how that's uh, important to the program and why, why strategically that was important for you guys. Sure, the story about F-18 capacity and capability and the, the money you talked about, the non-recurring money, is going to help us develop and deliver the Block 3 Super Hornet, which you see behind us. Uh, Block 3 will come off the production line in 2020. Next generation capability is a, a huge part of the flight plan for the program. On top of the 110 airplanes that are in the FY19 president's budget, that really gets to the capacity piece and making sure the Navy has the right number of airplanes for the force structure they want. And talk to us about the Gen 3. We've talked in the past about it, but bring us up to speed on what that Gen 3 capability is going to be for the jet. Sure, Block 3 Super Hornet is five major changes. The first is the conformal fuel tanks. So these are the gas tanks on top of the airplane. Give you about 120 nautical miles of range. Yep, right there on the shoulders. Wow, he knows it well enough that he just heard it from the... <laughs> That's right. Uh, then you have the advanced cockpit system, which is a 10 by 19 inch large area display. This is like an iPad for the airplane, really changes the user interface, next generation kind of user interface. Third, we have a big computer and a big data pipe, DTPN and TTNT. That's going to bring us a ton of computing power, which allows us to do a lot of fusion on the airplane, bringing all the information together in one spot and then sharing it in TTNT with the rest of the carrier air wing. Uh, we're going to make a 9,000 hour airplane off the line. Today we're a 6,000 hour airplane, so that's great life for the, for the platform. And then last, we're going to improve the stealth coatings on the airplane to buy ourselves a little bit more stealth performance. And um, one of the questions with, uh, well, let's go first to the integration and then I want to get to the stealth coating. Um, from an integration standpoint, Navy has, is going to be operating the F-35 Charlie. Uh, that's part of the joint force, so F-35s communicate with F-35s. Uh, and then the key also has been to connect the F-35 to the legacy force. Talk to us about that connectivity and how this uh, jet and the F-35 are going to be able to exchange information. Yeah, great. So Block 3 and, and all next-gen fighters are networked and survivable. So for the Block 3 Super Hornet, that TTNT network we talked about, that is on Growler and it's on E2D. So Super Hornet, Growler, E2D can talk on that TTNT network, which leaves Link 16 for F-35 and Super Hornet to talk together. But really the story's bigger than that. Block 3 Super Hornet, complementary capability with F-35. Uh, they can both bring things to the carrier air wing in a networked kind of way to help the Navy fly and fight for the next 20, 30 years. Both those planes, Block 3 and F-35, are next generation fighters, frontline fighters for the Navy out into the 2040s. Um, uh, with conformal fuel tanks obviously take the drag issue away, especially when you've got a lot of stuff that's hanging off the airplane. Um, I think folks don't fully recognize exactly, you know, you get more range, but it does impose quite a lot of drag on the airplane. Conformal solves that to a degree, but it's still more wetted area. Talk to us a little bit about how much range you're going to get out of the jet by putting that uh, feature on the plane. The conformal fuel tanks bring about 120 nautical miles of extended range on any given, uh, any given mission. Um, and that's really important. F-35 and Block 3 Super Hornet out there at, out at range, that 120 nautical miles makes a big difference. And as you talked about, reduces the drag. It's actually less fuel than the inboard drop tanks, but it's so much more efficient that it gets out 120 nautical miles farther. Yeah, which is the thing the F-35 guys always like to point out is we're very clean in our in our uh, profile, uh, which is the reason why we can we can go a little bit faster than some of the legacy, a little farther than uh, than the uh, legacy airplanes. Obviously, um, talk to us a little bit about stealth coatings. You know, the the Navy has historically been. Um, reluctant when it's comes to stealth, in part because of the challenges of close confines on a carrier deck. Airplanes do get banged around. Uh, there is a, a dirt quotient, which you don't have sometimes. Uh, you know, Air Force installations almost always when they're operating stealth aircraft have to have special facilities to keep the jets themselves clean. Talk to us what you can do in terms of coatings uh, with an airplane like this that, you know, the skin panels are still skin panels, so you're putting an applique on it, and applique sometimes can be a little bit of a challenge associated. So how are you getting that sort of durability, stealth factor that the Navy demands. The good news is the Super Hornets we deliver today are already a very stealthy airplane and we deliver that stealth and we maintain it very well as evidenced by Super Hornet has the lowest cost per flight hour of any airplane in, in the inventory, uh, U.S. inventory, and that includes maintaining our level of stealth. We brought airplanes back after years and years at sea, still that same high level of stealth performance. So with Block 3, we're not doing anything different. We're just doing it in a few different areas and a little more here, a little more there. 
Um, so we feel very confident that we'll be able to retain that lowest cost per flight hour reputation that we've earned uh, through performance. And you know, next gen fighters networked and survivable. Stealth is an aspect of it that a lot of people talk about, but it's also about uh, lethality. So weapons at range, we do that really well. It's about being networked and being able to communicate. All those things come together and that gives you a balanced approach to survivability. Um, what is, uh, as you map this out, how far out is production mm -hmm. and where are the other international customers? I know you guys are always looking at that. Uh, people have given up on the F-15 and it got another lease on life uh, uh, recently with uh, the, uh, uh, both in Saudi Arabia uh, but also in uh, uh, Qatar. So talk to us a little bit about what your plan is, the international plan is, and how long this airplane is going to be in production if there's anything you guys can do about it. For F-18, it's 110 airplanes in the president's budget combined with the Kuwait sale that was recently announced, take production out to 2025 at our current production rate of two per month. We're always looking to see if we want to increase that rate, but right now we're planning at two per month. Lots of ongoing uh, international interest and opportunities, competitions in Finland, uh, Switzerland, India, to name a few. With the U.S. Navy's investment in the Block 3 capability suite and decision to buy 110 more airplanes, lots of international partners are looking at Super Hornet and how it can fit into their air forces. And we're certainly working with all of them to see what are the right mix of capabilities for each, each country. Dan, thanks very much and best of luck with the program. Sure, thank you very much.